Hey everybody, it's the Modern Native. Some people think that when you're out here camping that you can't have a good meal, or it's got to be one of those weird camping meals or whatever else. I'm going to show you how you can make a really nice breakfast from scratch on the fire. Stay tuned. Alrighty everybody, so what we want to make today is eggs, and these were powdered eggs that I seasoned and I've had them soaking for a minute because I tried them yesterday, I didn't put enough water, so today's a new different a new try with a different consistency so it was uh homemade powdered eggs that my aunt made she dropped us off a bunch of uh dried food and stuff like that which is awesome definitely definitely gonna make it much farther and much better because of her but most of it is a thrive life basics stuff uh this this brand this company so far it's actually been pretty good this butter tastes like real, actual salted butter that people get in the bricks. Tastes just like it. And so what we're going to make is scrambled eggs, toast, chocolate milk with homemade syrup from scratch. And we got our coffee already brewed and ready. Uh, anytime the wife wants to come over and make a cup, it's already ready. And I'm going to make some syrup. And butter first because I'll take the butter and set it here for now and then start making everything else and ought to be pretty good so what it said on the butter was to add tiny amounts of water until you get the right consistency so I need to have a little bit of butter for the syrup and a little bit for the toast and I might make a little bit to cook the eggs in it. I do have a little bit of the butter oil that we made up. It was canola oil that we put some uh, vegetable oil based butter in and let it break up in there and it came out to a creamy oil. And it's worked and it's kept. So, But I might just do it all with this. That's probably going to be enough. And they have these dry packs in there so that's going to keep it fresh longer because every time you open it a little bit of moisture gets in especially out by a lake or whatever fire is almost burnt down enough so and we're kind of just used to having ash in our food anyway at this point so cares. Almost got it perfect right off the bat. And there you go, you got butter. Some nice, fluffy, salted butter. And this isn't like, it doesn't taste like the oil based butters. This is the real made from a cow, hand churned butter flavor kind of thing. Which, I'm more of a margarine fan, but I don't know, since we got this, this just tastes so good. Look at that. That's a nice consistency. Mm -hmm. So, got our butter. I'm going to take this extra. And I'm going to use some non-fat dry milk. Because it's baking cocoa. So we want to make a chocolate syrup 
to go with our whole milk that I'm going to make. And of course, that explodes on me. I'm going to use a smidge of some honey crystals for some sweeten. But I'm still going to put actual sugar in it. We're just running low on sugar right now. And it got wet on us, of course, when everything blew through. So. That should be good. Set this over here for the coffee. And got the little bit too. So we got our milk, we got our sweet, and we got our cocoa. Going to set this off to the side for the first paper. Came out pretty good already. So I mean, I could just put this directly into the chocolate milk and have it work like that, but I'm actually going to cook it up a little bit on the fire. Just so it comes to a better consistency and it's not chunky like that. there for a few minutes so it can get hot. Always make sure your stuff is stable, especially if you are limited on your resources. You don't want to tip things over and lose food. So our next step is going to be making the bread. I already got some butter in here. And this is flour, salt, wheat gluten, uh, a pinch of sugar, uh, some pepper, and some seasoning. Yeast and baking soda. Like I said, the mix I, I usually do. Now, I do a little bit of yeast and baking soda because it just speeds up the process, it seems. It makes it airy and fluffy. So I'm going to try to make some flatbread toast. That's not entirely flatbread, but it's not entirely bread. So it's a little hybrid And I just eyeballed it all. Took a couple of handfuls of flour, a couple of handfuls of the wheat gluten, a pinch of salt, a pinch of sugar, a small little scoop of the yeast, and a big pinch of the baking soda. Oh, and I put a little bit of the butter powder in here. Not to mention there was a little bit of butter stuck to the bottom of the bowl. 
this wheel is going to break if I try to push it past its limits anymore. It's a good stirring spoon, not a good folding dough spoon. And it's the wife's main spoon that she has to eat with. So, I've got a rag right here to clean this off with. Get the egg mixture off. Now, because of the way my aunt did it, the eggs are already cooked, I'm pretty sure, because of the way they're dried, so I don't have to worry about cross-contamination too much. But still, wipe it off, get it clean, all that. And all this is getting cooked anyway, so not a big deal. And I'm sure I could have put a little bit of egg in this, and it might have made it just a little richer. There's a clump of the pink salt that I didn't want to break up. more water. Can't forget about the syrup though. Almost did for a second. But that should have been warmed up enough. The rest of those butter chunks will melt. This is warm enough now. I can let this settle before I put it into the milk and let it cool because nobody wants a warm chocolate milk. Oh, and that came out like a nice, rich chocolate syrup. So that'll be good. And like I said before, when I dip out of the camera, I'm wiping off the spoon. So then it's just going to be a lot of kneading and a lot of all this. So.
you want to really knead through it because there's going to be some spots that are moist, some spots that are dry, and you want to get it to one consistency or else you're going to get what happened. One of the first times I did this and the wife's going to bite into a piece of bread and get a mouthful of dry flour. Alrighty everybody, so I got the flat pan on there, got some oil on it, and I'm going to break this up into four slices, and that's just rolling it into a ball, stretching it out. And flattening it. Now, because I used wheat gluten, it's going to be uh, a little closer to hardtack than bread. But with the flour and everything else, it should still make it fluffy and soft. And I'm cooking it on an oil pan. And then when I set it here, I always kind of flatten it a little bit onto the pan so it spreads out a little more without going too thin. Yeah. Boom. I pinch in the middle, try to get it to the thinness I want, and then I work it out. See all the air pockets from the yeast activating and the baking soda doing its job. Those that know me know I don't really measure anything, I don't follow recipes, I just I know what needs to go into it, and I just kind of eyeball everything. That pan got rained on, needed to be reseasoned anyway, so it was a good day to do this. Cast iron, rain, do not mix. And last one. Had an unmixed chunk on there. It was a chunk of sugar because of it getting moisture in it.
first one. I'm getting close to being ready to flip. So, let's check on this. Room temperature. So that's just a bottle of filtered water out of the geo filter. We are using that. And to easy pour, what I do, I just do it like this. Some always still wants to splash out on me, but that's the name of the game. Yep, see? It's always a small avalanche. My biggest concern is that the dry pack doesn't come out with it. So you gotta leave yourself enough headspace in the bottom to be able to actually get this all in there. And then pour the chocolate in ever so slowly. I don't have a pour spout on this pan. Talk about multitasking though. And based off of my test yesterday, That should turn out pretty good. It's going to take a little bit for that powder to dissolve, and it's going to take a lot of shaking. But there you go. Chocolate milk is ready. So now, bread. Got to flip it. It's all keeping track of all this stuff and trying to do multiple things at once. In the order I put it in the pan, I put it in the cooler spot and saved the hottest spot for last. So by the time I came over to flip it, they'd all be done. And actually, I think it might almost be good enough that I could take it off and let the heat just simmer onto it. I'm going to let it sit for another second. While I get ready to 
this out of the way. Put down the books. Chocolate's done. This is done. Okay. So now we got the eggs. Now all I need is some freeze-dried bacon and we'd be set. So like I said, the bread only needed just another second. So. Got my handle. And look at that. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's pretty. Set that there, let that chill out. Actually. I'm gonna take dollops of butter. Now it's time for the eggs. Let that melt for a second. Mm, so we got the toast, we got the eggs. Oh, see what I mean? Just gotta keep mixing. So also we're also we're at a creamer, but I can just use some dry milk for the creamer. It'll mix into the coffee real well. It'll melt down a lot faster than this does. With cold water, it doesn't want to mix in as fast. If I remember right, it tells you to actually like yeah, one cup of warm water quarter cup to a third cup of milk powder, stir, and let cool or refrigerate. But, I mean, oh well. I only have cool water, so it takes a little bit more effort to get it to mix. And I have no way to refrigerate something after the fact other than sinking it into the lake. But the edge of the lake is pretty warm right now because we got a nice bit of sun coming out. So hopefully all of our stuff dries and we can get to trucking. Preliminary taste test. Pretty good. So for that, I actually think I'm going to add just 
a little bit more water to that. And I know that sounds weird, but it'll get it to its oily consistency. I've also got some beans soaking on the back here for tonight. Well, I think these eggs are going to turn out better than yesterday. Yesterday I don't think I had enough water and they came out kind of dry. But we didn't care. We haven't had eggs in so long. around the pan. Give them one second. Oh yeah, much nicer. Much fluffier. Looking like real scrambled eggs. And remember when you're working with cast iron, don't grab the pan without something on your hand. So I used my sleeve. It wasn't too hot, so it was fine. Very nice. Okay, so that was my problem yesterday. I just needed to have a little bit more water with the eggs until it was like a runny, watery consistency. So, if you ever have powdered eggs, remember what the consistency of a beaten egg is like and try to get it to that point. And it tastes great. Scrambled eggs, toast, and chocolate milk. From scratch, from dried products, over the fire. And, I'm gonna make some coffee. But ain't nothing special about that, except instead of creamer, I have dry milk. Hope you guys enjoyed. This was a lot of fun. I enjoy making things from scratch. And, you can do it out while you're camping over the fire. So remember, until next time, get out there, be a native, go beast.